welcome back. Well, losing a loved one has to be one of the hardest times in your life. Well, one woman said after she lost her husband, she experienced something very unusual. Now, she says she heard conversations between her husband and God, and she actually wrote them down, and we can read all about this in her new book, Hey God, Yes, Charles. Welcome, Rebecca Cooper. Rebecca, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we're, of course, going to talk about the book, but let's kind of start from the beginning um, and let us know what happened with your husband. Charles had a medical event that was very sudden called thoracic aortic dissection. It's the exact same thing that happened to John Ritter, and it's unpredictable. It's not really diagnosable in the beginning unless you think you're at risk for that, which he was not. And in Ritter's case, um, he was sent home and because it's hard to diagnose, and then he died. In Charles's case, he made it to the parking lot after leaving the ER, and it came back again with a vengeance. And so I'm in Nashville, he's in Atlanta. First thing I know, he's going in for open heart surgery. They did not want him to regain consciousness after the surgery, and it, it was touch and go, but maybe a little optimism. And he fought it for 13 days, and I think because he was in such good health, he did, you know, give it a fighting chance, but finally the complications just began to pile up. And when he died, it was very shocking and very traumatic, not just for me, but for our family and friends. Definitely. And then, of course, we have what started the book was you started to hear these conversations. So kind of describe what you heard. I did. A, a, a friend of mine probably rang my doorbell three days after Charles's service, and she was standing there with a pen and paper and said, right, you know, it helped me when my husband died, maybe it'll help you. And I was so mad at the world, mad at God, and, and but I thought, oh, okay, you know, if I think of something, you know. Well, it, then it just sort of began to feel like I was hearing these conversations in heaven between Charles and God, and they usually had something to do with what I was doing, and so they were helpful and insightful, and I just began to scribble them down, and that's how it started. And so what made you decide to take the, the information that you were hearing, scribbling them down, and then to turn it into a book? I didn't. I had probably hundreds of pieces of paper at the end of that first year. But I mentioned it to a couple of friends of mine, and they said, you know, you ought to at least put all that stuff in some kind of notebook for your kids and grandkids to have to read someday. And so I went looking, and I had paper everywhere, just stuck in drawers and closets in the car and purses. And it probably took me another year to find it all. And of course, it wasn't dated. I wasn't writing a book. So I mean, that didn't matter when I was scrubbing all that down. But I did find it, and I put it together, and I shared it with a few people, and then they would share it with a few people, and first thing I know, somehow it got shared with somebody at a publishing company, and I got a message out of the blue asking if they could publish the book. They said they thought it would help people. Wow, that's incredible, because <laughs> usually it's the other way around. I know. <laughs> so that's amazing. And, Thank you. And Rebecca, would you say that this kind of was therapy for you? Does this help you kind of deal with that huge loss? I didn't realize it at the time, but when I look back now, I mean, people ask me, you know, did, did it really feel like you were hearing those conversations? And I'm like, yeah, it did. And then, well, do you think you could have imagined them? Well, sure, I could have. Well, were you crazy? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and so that first year, and longer sometimes, is really hard. And I don't think there's any question that through these conversations, it just became a way to sort of keep Charles and God in my life. and. I really needed that. Well, and you went through a, a couple of different losses. Um, your mother passed away close to when your husband did, and then yes. a few years ago, your father. And right. When you blogged, you talk about being the last man standing. Um, what does that really mean, or, or what, you know, what does that, again, like therapy, what does that mean for you? Right. I heard that term um, from a friend of mine who's widowed, and I, I went home after the conversation, and I really thought about it. And I thought, wow, you know, th she is right. If you live long enough, somebody in the family is going to bubble up and kind of be the last man standing of that generation. And after Charles and, and both my parents died, I realized that was me. And so on one hand, I'm still giving the kids advice like he and I did, except now I got no backup. But then on the other hand, I thought, that's going to happen to one of them one of these days, too. So you better model whatever it is you want them to see when you're the last man standing. Oh, that's very well put. And again, I think that 
this book will help lots of people out Hope there. Hope so. And, and just the way it helped you, but and now we have something that we can read and, and kind of hold on to and help us through our hard time as well. So, Rebecca, I want to thank, thank you so you. much for telling your personal story today on the show and for visiting us. Thank you for having me. Thank Appreciate you. it. And for a free downloadable excerpt from the book, log on to HeyGodYesCharles.com.